Hi, this is Brandon Swain from ThirstShim.com. Today we're going to talk about an exercise called the Handcuff RDL. This is a progression exercise that we use to help teach our athletes how to properly hinge. Um, I would say that most of our kids start with this exercise, so I guess this would probably be a regression for most of your training programs, but if you're looking for a way to teach the hinge pattern uh, a little bit more smoothly, we've had some pretty good success with this. Uh, and then once the athletes get up to pretty much this 18, um, pound kettlebell, we pretty much move them on to a different progression. So um, think of this as step one. If you got somebody that has no idea how to hinge, this might be your golden ticket to be able to help them get that to click and then you're good to go. So I prefer a kettlebell because of the way the, the uh, bell is shaped. You could use a regular dumbbell. I just think the kettlebell works better. Um, do whatever you think works best for you in your particular situation. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put our hands in the handcuff position with the kettlebell. So what that means is both hands behind us, pretty much like we're handcuffed, okay? So a lot of kids kind of get with this as well. So um, we get to play around with them and have a good time. We did personal training clients, <laughs> maybe not so much. But once we get here, then we're just going to make sure our feet are regular shoulders width stance here. Toes are relatively straight. Get in your regular hinge position like you're going to do an RDL yourself. So we're going to coach them to be there. First step is we teach the soft knee. So just unlock the knees, make sure they're feeling the whole foot. Once we get that, now what we're good is we're going to say we're going to keep the chest tall. We're going to push our hips back into the weight of this kettlebell. So I do think having a kettlebell that's heavier than lighter is okay. They're going to have something to push into. And with their chest tall, I want them to kind of make sure that their shoulders are nicely pulled back, but they can feel their armpits, so to speak. So we don't want to be rounded like this. Feel your armpits, kind of have your shoulders back, good uh, tall chest, good posture, whole feet, unlock the knees. Then we're, all we're going to do is keep it all that rigid. We're going to push our hips back into the kettlebell. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing until they feel that stretch. There's my stretch. Come back. Feel that stretch, feel that stretch. Come back. So as soon as they get to feeling this, they're like, okay, I feel my hamstrings. I can kind of tell that I'm moving as a unit. Um, some kids will try to do this to get out of it. Really make sure they're feeling those whole foot and just tell them, you know, push those hips back all the way back. Or even like my wife tells some of the kids, pretend like you're mooning somebody. You're going to pull your pants down, stick your butt out the window, and then chest tall. So this is, since this is a very, I don't want to say simple exercise, but since this is kind of like square one for us, um, we usually just have it for three sets to eight to 12 reps. The kids start to get it by week one, week two, we move them on to the next exercise. Uh, we don't try to spend a whole lot of time here. We just want to make sure that they've got something. Some kids, it's the first session in, they get it. Some kids, it's three weeks. Um, but as long as they can kind of learn that hinge pattern, um, how to unlock the knees, feel the whole foot, keep the chest tall, torso stays stacked, and they're pushing their hips back. Then once we get this, we're pretty much smooth sailing from our hinge progressions, and we don't have to spend as much time trying to teach the soft knee, the whole foot, um, and all that kind of jazz. This kind of does that work for us. So if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.